what we're going, getting for, what we're looking for really is gender diversity. It's mm. not more people who identify as female versus more people who identify, identify as male. We need gender diversity. And behaviors manifest all across the spectrum in terms of gender. Um, and so what we need to look at is what is an effective leadership behavior and how do we make sure we get more of that regardless of what the gender packaging is. Mm. The, the piece that's important to note is that women are socialized a certain way and men are socialized a certain way. So you're going to get a little bit more of this collaborative, highly relational leadership from women, which is fine. It's neither here nor there. We need, we need both in terms of gender diversity. The worst thing a woman can do or any human can do regardless of gender is pretend to be something that they're not. That's not the seat of power for you. If you tend to be more directive and you happen to be a woman, that's fine. Find a place that works for you and, um, and be successful being who you are. If you tend to be a collaborative leader and you're a man, awesome, go do that. Um, so for me, it's more really being clear on what your own personal strengths are, finding an environment that suits that, trying to develop yourself in the best into the best version of that. You don't wanna become an authoritarian if you're mm. directive and you don't wanna become a pushover if you're collaborative. Um, in terms of just general healthy and productive leadership behaviors, they do trend towards the more stereotypical feminine characteristics. And I've done a ton of workshops with men and women where I ask them, describe a good leader. And it is those things like communicative and um, can manage conflict and inclusive and um, relationship oriented, all of the things that would be more stereotypically feminine, but we have plenty of women who don't identify that way. And so I, I just wouldn't want to box people in. I do want to though celebrate the characteristics that I think are healthy and productive that do tend to be more stereotypically feminine. So women don't get sucked into this idea that they have to be masculine, that unless they are. If you have masculine characteristics, fantastic, go do that. But if you don't, don't pretend. Don't yeah. pretend to be masculine because you will you will lose sort of your superpowers and, and compromise your ability to be effective in, as a leader. That said, also our society tends to celebrate pretty toxic masculine characteristics in leaders. So narcissism, some characteristics that track as psychopathic. Um, and so, you know, that I think is the push that we need to be really mindful of. And I'm not saying that men tend to be more that way than others, uh, than, than women, but we, we really need to guard against that toxic masculine conceptualization of what a leader is and that blind following that's been happening lately in particular with our national leaders and not, you know, foreign and domestic. Mm. Yeah. Actually, uh, you have wrote to me and said that you refuse to say that women are better than men and women and men are, they complement each other, right? So uh, do you think that women has any, have any limitations? No, I mean, I, I, I don't see that women have any limitations that can't be, um, that are any different than a man's limitations or someone who's transgender's limitations. People are, are people, we're different and that's what mm. makes us powerful and I think can add to the conversation.